Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. My club is having a challenge every month, and this time it was for a goblet. Well, I've made goblets before, as you'll see in past videos on this channel, but instead of just making a regular go goblet, I decided to upscale it just a little bit and try and integrate some of the ideas, at least, from a Celtic knot to give sort of a swirl in the bowl both inside and out. This is not painted on. This is real wood in through. It is a three-piece goblet. Uh, for a goblet this tall, I prefer a three-piece because it's less of a test of skill and more of a test of making a nice goblet. So uh, let's go ahead and make this Celtic-inspired goblet. The process for this project is a variant from my in-loop Celtic knot process. The full process enables perfectly intersecting slices of any number, not solely four. This is because I do not rely on square stock for the process. Instead, I rely on templates that I can draw with any computer drawing program or manually that I glue to thin plywood. Attached to the end of my rounded wood, these define the number of slices. Another component to the process is a simple sled for the table saw. This enables repetitive cuts at chosen angles. Scrap boards, hot melt glued to the sled, hold the project wood with its templates. This project omits the third component, the full process, since this time I'm cutting only one halfway through my cylinder. Another difference is that I can cut all my slice cuts in one session at the saw. Normally, I would be gluing in my contrasting wood with each cut. For this project, I'm milling black walnut to fit the saw curve. It could be thicker, but not for this project. Then off to a cool place to epoxy the dark walnut slices into the project wood. Even with 30 minute epoxy, I recruited help to mix and spread the epoxy and insert the slices. Shrink wrap will help keep everything together until the epoxy hardens overnight. With the epoxy cured, I remove the shrink wrap and then the templates at the end of the cylinder. I am ready to start turning since, especially, I already have tenons on each end. With the wood again mounted to a chuck on the lathe, I can start by cutting back the excess wood from the slices. These like to splinter. Remember that full face shield, by the way? Then start to define the shape of the goblet's bowl. This is only to guide the hollowing and will be refined later if the goblet survives. It helps to drill a hole to start hollowing. This handheld drill is perfect for this task. Then end grain hollowing with a spindle gouge. The gouge is held nearly closed, meaning that the flute is near vertical. Then Cuts start in the center hole and cut outward. This cuts quickly because I'm cutting into side grain. If I were to hollow this like a cross grain bowl, the hollowing process would be much harder and much slower. The main difference is grain orientation. After removing the bulk of the wood, I switch to scrapers to refine the interior surface. I want to go a bit deeper, but my tools are extended far over the tool rest. It is difficult to keep the handle stable. So I mount a stabilizer from Ron Brown. The stabilizer captures my tool and enables me to confidently go to my final depth. Fortunately, my tool is long enough that this works great. After a thorough sanding of the interior, I can apply shellac friction polish. I like this because the shellac blends well, dries fast, and buffs with the lathe. Time for the exterior. I have enough wood, still between the bowl and the chuck, that this project is stable and I do not need a steady rest. I could have brought up the live center padded with a rubber stopper, 
but I need to regularly check my wall thickness and interior versus exterior profile. But since this is short, it is okay. Now with a spindle gouge, I can whittle down the exterior. I should do push cuts until they're almost done, except that I do not know when I'm almost done. So I alternate between shear cuts and push cuts until I'm happy. I end with shear cuts for a smoother finish. With the exterior refined, the final refinement is sandpaper. 80 grit does great to perfect the curve before smoothing with finer grits. Starting too fine of grit risks having to do a lot more sanding. I burn a quick burn line below the bowl and touch again with fine sandpaper before applying shellac friction polish to the exterior. Then part off the goblet bowl. I can use the remaining wood for the base. Before I forget it, I drill a quarter inch hole for the stem tenon, then go on to shape the base, then sand the base. How about a burn line like the one on the bowl? Then a touch of fine sandpaper and more shellac. You probably did not realize that I cut a tenon into the top side shape. Here it comes in handy since it fits nicely into my small jaws. Then I can shape the bottom side of the base, including a cove, so it sits well with them and a mortise, for just in case. Then sand and finish. Back to the goblet bowl. It is mounted to my chuck with pins similar to what I showed in the video a couple weeks ago. The difference is that these are shorter, used flanged button head bolts, and have a ledge at the base that the goblet can sit on. While I 3D printed mine, these are easily turned. Some people, responding to that video, also insert them into vinyl tubing for padding. For now, I need a mortise for the stem tenon. Then shape this bowl bottom feature before sanding and applying finish here. The last component to my goblet is the stem. First, I ask my wife how long she likes the stem. Then I can proceed. This wood is hard maple, Turning the stem resembles a finial, except that I need a tenon on both ends. At first, I was favoring a symmetrical design, but changed to have the central area larger on what will be the base side. This should blend well with the overall goblet. My skew is my preferred tool for these fine spindles. Sharpened end wrenches help to size the end tenons. I start large and work down to the quarter inch final size. After sanding, I can burn more lines before applying, what else, more shellac. This completes my three-piece enhanced goblet for my club's challenge. The bowl's accent is a first. I was not sure how it would turn out, but I definitely like it. I also like that there is sufficient contrast between the English walnut and the black walnut. The English walnut blends also nicely to the stem. Those of you who have seen my Celtic Knot remote demo have a head start on the rest of you. This goblet is a keeper. However, everyone deserves to put their own spin on it. Therefore, what would you do differently? Please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my website because my notifications are more reliable than YouTube's. Please tell your friends about my weekly videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Please wear your full face shield whenever the lathe is running, and that's my best safety tip.